into this lesson. So in this lesson, we're going to start a new topic, namely roots of equations. Now, up to this point, we got introduced to Taylor series. Taylor series gave us the ability to approximate functions. If you have a complex function, we can approximate it in the simplest function that we know, which is a polynomial. Now, it also gave us the ability to approximate derivatives. For instance, we can approximate the first derivative using the forward, backward, or centered finite difference that we introduced in previous lessons. Now, another uh, mathematical problem that you might have is to find a root of an equation. Now, what is a root of an equation? Well, it's very, very simple. It's the x-intercept. It's the x value that the function is zero at. That is the entire problem that we're trying to solve. Now, you already got roots of equations before using the concept of factoring, and we're going to review that. But now, given that maybe you have a function that's very difficult to find the x value where the function is equal to zero, how do we go about this in terms of numerical methods? Now, there are two main types of root finding techniques. We have bracketing methods and we have open methods. Now, bracketing methods come in two types. We have bisection or false position, and open methods are either neutron raphson or secant method. Now, bracketing method comes from their name. They bracket the root. They bracket the root using two guesses. So in this type of methods, we require two guesses to bracket the root and to converge on what the root of that equation is. Now, open methods require uh, only one guess, and because they require more one guess, uh, they have the ability to diverge or move away from the solution. So that's one limitation that open methods have. Now, in this lesson, we're going to start with the first one, which is a bisection method. Now, we're going to accomplish three things in this lesson. We're going to review how we usually analytically find a root of an equation. Then we're going to learn the concept behind the bisection method. Then we're going to develop a program to approximate x squared minus x minus 2 to an approximate error of 0.1% using the bisection method. Now, how do we normally or analytically uh, find a root of an equation? Well, we use a, a, a concept called factoring. So let's take this equation, for instance, x squared minus x minus 2. So basically, when we factor this way, we ask the question, what is a number that if I multiply will give me minus 2? And if I add, will give me uh, negative 1. And that's basically negative 1, or negative 2, I'm sorry, and 1. And when we take this factor here and equal to 0, and this term here equal to 0, we find that x is equal to and x is equal to negative 1. And those are the two values the function is 0 at, right? And we can, if we look at the graphical representation of that function, we can find that here, negative 1, we have the x-intercept, or where the function is equal to 0, and we have also 2. Now, this is a very simple function. This is a quadratic function. Now, sometimes you have a cubic, a, a fourth-order polynomial, even another more complex function that is very difficult to find what the root is. So, how do we go about this in a more simpler way, in a more numerical uh, method way? Well, one way is to do it using the bisection, and the bisection is a very, very simple concept. The first thing that you do with a bisection is you need to bracket the root. In other words, you need to choose two guesses, and we're going to try to approximate, say, the uh, root at 2. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to choose my two guesses, and I'm going to choose my lower limit guess to be 1.5, and my upper limit to be 3. Now, those are educated guesses, because when you're using those numerical methods, usually what you would do is you would uh, uh, graph the function, and you would visually inspect it. And you'd be like, okay, so I have a root around here, so my educated guess would be around 1.5, and 3 would be my guesses, for instance. And what the bisection does to find the approximation, very, very simple, which is basically takes those two numbers, those two limits, and average them. The upper limit plus the lower limit divided by 2. And whatever that is would be my guess, or my first uh, approximation of the root. And this is going to be 2.25 in this case. Now, when you, in any numerical methods technique, when you get an approximation, the second thing that you would do is you need to calculate what the uh, error is, right? You want to you see how far off you are from the true value or how, how accurate your answer is.
Okay, so let's assume this is not accurate enough. Well, if it's not accurate enough, we need to go get another approximation. Well, when we created this root, we also created two intervals here. One interval has the root in it and another doesn't. So we need to find a way to uh, um, find the interval that has the root. Well, we can clearly see that this is the interval that has the root, but what is characteristic of that interval? Well, what's characteristic about that interval is that there is a change in sign here, which is characteristic of what a root is, right? So this is the um, this is the root that I have, and this, for instance, is the lower limit. So if I got the function at the lower limit, and I got the function at the root, if I multiply those two, it will give me a negative number, because there is a change in sign here. If I go at this interval, and I took the function at the root here, and the function at the upper limit here, they will give me a positive answer. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to use this criteria to narrow down which interval my root is in. So in this case, uh, since the multiple of the function at the lower limit and the multiple of the function at the, um, the root is negative, for it, my root is in this interval. And before I go ahead and get the new root, you can see that this root becomes the upper limit of this um, interval, right? So this becomes the lower limit, this becomes the upper limit. Then I use this equation up here to get an even better estimate and it's going to be the middle of this interval here. And that's going to be my second estimate. And then we, the next uh, uh, step is I find the interval where my root is. And then I would assign, for instance, in this case, my root is here, which means my root becomes the lower limit of this interval. And then I get an even better estimate. And I use this equation, this average, very simple average equation. So let's go ahead and actually write the code, and this will become very, very clear. So let's call it sub bisection. So the first thing that I will do is I'm going to go into um, create my do while loop because we know that we want to keep creating estimates until we go below 0.1%. So I'm going to say create a loop do while the approximate error is greater than 0.1%, uh, right? And if you remember how we close the do while loop, we just say a loop at the bottom here. Uh, as you remember, the first thing that we do is we decide what are my upper and lower limit, right? So my upper and lower limit that I chose, my lower is 1.5 and my upper is 3. Also, we said that anything that you, any variable that you add into your code, you have to define. So with the approximate error, we said we always define it initially at 100% error. After we defined our upper and lower limit, the first thing that we do here is we create our first uh, approximation. So I'm going to say XR is equal to the upper limit plus the lower limit divided by 2. And we said after we get any approximation in numerical methods, we have to get the, um, the error, the approximate error. And if you remember, we have the absolute and it's the new minus, we're going to say x old here, divided by new. So new minus old divided by new. And then I multiply by 100 since I'm dealing with, I have an extra, an extra parenthesis here. So uh, since we're dealing with a uh, percentage, I multiply by 100. Also, since we already know what the true value is for our root, which is 2, how about we also get the true error? And we don't always have that available, but might as well let's uh, get it. So we have 2 minus xr divided by um, 2. And we also multiply this by 100. So now that we have uh, our root, and we calculated the approximate error, and we also calculated our true error, what is the next step? Well, we said the next step here, when I created this approximation, now I have two intervals. So I have to have a decision structure here that decides which one of these is actually um, the interval that has my root. So I can go ahead and go get a better estimate. So I'm going to say if, and we said f of um, the root, xr, uh, multiplied f of, say, the lower limit, 
if this is less than zero, then, so if, say for instance, if this is less than zero, and we found we multiplied this function value with this function value, that means this interval has um, our root in it. So what do I want to do? Well, I want to replace this xr to be my upper limit. So this is what I want to do. So I'm going to say store the xr into the upper limit if that's the case. Well, what if this is not less than zero? Well, if this is not less than zero, it means that the root is in the other interval. Well, if the root is in the other interval, I want my xr to be stored in the lower limit then. So I'm going to say else store the xr in the lower limit. And we end the f by saying just end f. Now, if you remember from the Taylor series, we said that for us to um, calculate the approximate error, I have to keep track of my old root, right? So this is where the x old comes from. Before I actually go back and create a newer xr, I have to store the older one somewhere so I can have the ability to actually calculate the approximate error in relation to the iteration before that. So I'm going to say my x old is equal to xr. So before I go to create a newer xr, I'm going to um, store the xr that I have currently in xor, x old. Now this is, we're actually done with the code for the bisection. And I just want to do a few more things. First of all, here we did not define what the function is, and we can do here. Um, we can either define it here, we can actually put x squared minus x uh, minus 2 here, or for ease, we can just generally define the function up here, and we just can call it. And I'm just going to say f is equal to x power 2 minus x minus 2. So now, when I run the code, it's going to come here and it's going to uh, take xr, put it in this function and get the corresponding function value, and uh, plug x lower and plug it in and get the corresponding um, f value. Another code that I want to uh, include is actually a code that would display all this information that I have here. I want a code that would uh, display for me the iterations, a code that would display for me the approximate, and approximate error, true error, and the corresponding root for every single iteration. Uh, this is just to see uh, how my numbers are changing as the iteration are going uh, by. So I'm going to use cells. I'm going to say cells. And I'm going to say this starts at um, the 29th. So I'm going to say 28 plus i. And the iteration is at column 2. So I'm going to say this is equal to i. And because I introduced the uh, letter i here, I have to initialize it up here as i equal to 1 for the first uh, iteration. But I also want a code here that would up the i by 1 for every single iteration. So this, this line of code, these two lines of code are going to keep track of my iterations. Uh, another thing that I want to display is I want to display the, the approximate error for each iteration. So I'm going to say 28i, and I have this on the third column. And I'm going to say ea. Just for ease, let's actually copy this. And I'll paste it here. And what I have on the fourth column, I have et, and also uh, the last column. I have, I want the corresponding xr. So what's going to, what what this line of code, or these uh, uh, four lines of code are going to do, they're going to display the iteration, where this corresponding approximate error, corresponding true error, and corresponding root. Okay. So up to this point, I am done with my code. So actually, let's delete this. This is something that I generated earlier. So let's delete this. So if I run this, it should display all of the values that I had initially here. It's going to display iteration 1 with its corresponding uh, approximate true and um, approximate uh, so a solution that we got for the root. And it's going to do this for however many iterations. And it's going to do this until it, it reaches an approximate error below 0.1%. Uh, so let's run the code and see if it's uh, working properly. 
Okay, so I made a mistake. I actually did not, this is four and four. So let me uh, change this to column five. So if I run again, all right, perfect. So we can see that it actually took 10 iterations for us to go below 0.1%. Here by our approximate error is 0.073%, and it went from um, the ninth iteration at 0.146%. And here we are at 1.9999512. Um, so very, very close to the um, root that we're actually trying to find, which is actually 2. And uh, one more thing that I want you to see is the differences between the approximate error and the true error. Because you can see that the true error actually went below 0.1% after um, the seventh iteration, at the eighth iteration, and the approximate error actually went below uh, the 0.1 at the tenth. But you can see this is a graph that shows you um, how the error is declining with the every iteration. So the x-axis is from 0 to 12. Um, and this is this is a log scale just to sh show you a smooth uh, straight line um, So you can see both of them are reducing at the same uh, rate, but you can see that the um, That the actual true error um, Shows a lower values than the approximate error So what did we learn in this lesson? So in this lesson we got introduced to root finding techniques and we started with the first technique, which is the bisection method, which is uh, finds the root very, very simply, which is just averaging the upper and lower limits of the uh, intervals. Uh, we learned how to write a very, very simple code to do the bisection method. We, find, we found that it's made up of identifying the upper and lower limit. Uh, this is the main uh, root finding uh, equation. Uh, we learned how to uh, calculate the errors and we learned how to uh, write an if statement to find what interval now has the root in it after we um, uh, bisected, and this is where the name comes from, after we bisected the interval. And this is just a code that I've written to display the, um, uh, uh, display the solutions here so we can see what's happening with every iteration, how, how many iterations did it take to go below 0.1%. Uh, well, that's it for this lesson, and I'll see you in the next lesson.